Hey guys, my name is Lunar. Welcome to this very special Christmas character build video for Skyrim Special Edition. First off, Merry Christmas everyone. I hope you're all having a good day and all got what you wanted for Christmas. Hopefully a copy of Skyrim Special Edition. Since it's Christmas, what better way to celebrate than a Christmas theme build? So sit back and relax as we recount the tale of Old Santa Claus. We start our build with the backstory, which is lore friendly of course, well as much as Santa can be in Skyrim. Then we go over races, factions, beliefs and allegiances, skills, perks, abilities and weapons and armors, and finally finish on mods. And of course if you want to get to a specific section, all the timestamps are in the description. For the series we are working our way through all the skill tree focusing on builds for each of the different skill types, and of course what better skill for Santa Claus to have than a lockpick. So we are going to start off the backstory and see how our character, the lockpicking Santa, came to be. Our story begins in Skyrim on a very specific date, the 31st of Evening Star, 4th Eda 1981, the very last day in the Tamrielic calendar. This day is also known as the Old Life Festival and is seen as a time to reflect and contemplate within the Empire's many temples. It also said that upon this day, temple priests will raise loved ones from the dead for a sizable fee. Winter had proven itself the harshest of masters as the festival had drawn closer, with many of the lowest and poorest dying where they slept out in the streets. It was said that the Jarls had locked their gates in fear, afraid that they had angered the divines and were being punished. No one could leave or enter the great cities, and those with shelter hoarded their warmth and food from those without. Disease and starvation were rife for those trapped out in the cold, and the wretched of all races huddled together for warmth and assurance. Dawnstar, far to the north, was not immune to the strife. Frost trolls had come from the mountains and decimated precious supplies, killing every farmer or soldier who dared stand his ground. Farms were burnt to the ground over the smallest scrap of food, the animals slaughtered by starving men and creatures equally. Yet, there are always those who profit from others' pain. With thick fur to cover their bodies, the Khajiit caravans of Skyrim travelled the roads with impunity. Their wagons thick with well-guarded spoils, these barely tolerated visitors become both rebelled and loathed wherever they appear at city's locked gates. They bought with them food, furs, and for those seeking their comforts elsewhere, a great variety of skooma, and for their trouble, the Khajiit merchant asked extortionate prices for their wares. One such caravan arrived amidst a storm, two Khajiit traders, mates, the female heavy with child, and a caterer of armed guards. The people of Dawnstar had nothing left to offer, and in their desperation, attacked the traders whilst they slept. The entire caravan was wiped out, and the people of Dawnstar disappeared into the night with everything they could carry. Another Khajiit caravan happened by in the next morning, led by a young female named Akari. Feeling sickened by the treatment of her kin, Akari walked upon the destruction and found the female Khajiit hidden beneath the burnt out wagon. Close to death, her fur turned white with frost, Akari used her claws to bring an end to the suffering. It was then she noticed the female was with child. Her claws already bloody, Akari ripped the cub from the mother's womb and brought it cold and limp into the world. Heartbroken at this final loss, prayed to any divine who would listen to give the child life. Even one so new to Skyrim knew of the priest's magic, and when all seemed lost, the cub breathed in deeply and began to cry. Akari took the child from Dawnstar, and no other Khajiit caravan travelled north that winter, nor several after that. She raised him as her own son and taught him the ways of the merchant as they travelled across the harsh lands. Despite Akari's insistence, Khajiits were more than the shady criminals they were painted to be. She taught her cub about the darker side of their business as he grew. This included their association with the thieves guild, fencing stolen goods and dealing in skooma. Akari herself was an accomplished pickpocket and lockpick, skills well learned as an orphan in Baron elsewhere. The cub grew to be an accomplished young Khajiit, as skilled as his adopted mother and cunning as a cat could be. As the years passed, hostilities towards non-human races grew and the caravans began to face greater prejudice than ever before. They were no longer welcome in cities and had to set up tents beyond the walls, hoping a traveller was desperate enough to trade. Our Khajiit grew increasingly frustrated as everything his adopted mother worked for began to stagnate. Having already lost one mother to the selfishness of the Nards, the young Khajiit decided to take matters into his own hands. He travelled ahead to Dawnstar, a hold he had yet to visit since his harrowing birth, finding the place entirely unremarkable. Our Khajiit watched those who had killed his parents and judged them by their deeds. Evening Star approached again and so did the rest of the caravan, and upon the night of the 24th our Khajiit set his revenge in motion. The people already hungered for new wares, their harvest and gathering as poor as it had been 20 years ago. Dressed in his finest red cloak, the young Khajiit set up shop on the outskirts of town and offered food to the locals for exceptionally low prices. Suspicious of outsiders, yet desperate to feed their children, the people of Dawnstar lined up to buy whatever they could. 
our Khajiit smiled toothily as he sold sweet rolls, accepting their meagre offerings in exchange. To those he deemed worthy, he offered an inexpensive meal. To those he judged wanting, he gave treats laden with moon sugar. The hungry, desperate town people ate without thought, and within day half the town was sick. Sweating, vomiting, and desperate. A carry and her caravan arrived upon the day of the Old Life Festival, their carts stocked high with skooma. By the time they left Dawnstar, they were richer than they had ever been. And so the myth grew on the 24th of Evening Star, when the people of the Holes were hungry and desperate. A Khajiit dressed all in red would visit in the night. With him he would carry a list, the names of the townsfolk written upon it. Those who were good would wake to find sweet rolls and treats upon the fireplace, a welcome reprieve from the harshness of winter. Those found wanting would find their sweet rolls poisoned, soaked in the addictive moon sugar that would inevitably lead them to skooma. Whether ego, starvation, or desperation, never a sweet roll was left uneaten. Our Khajiit hero would disappear at dawn just as Akari's wagon appeared on the horizon. This creature they named Santa Claus, for there were always animal-like scratches around the keyholes of the visited houses. Growing accustomed to the wealth the winter season brought him, our young Khajiit began to think of a new way to make money. Content to let the myth of Santa Claus grow, he used his considerable lockpicking ability to break into the houses of those he deemed naughty, stealing everything they owned and leaving nothing but moon sugar treats as compensation. Security became an obsession across the holds of Skyrim, and the Thieves Guild of Riften soon found it impossible to burgle anyone at all. Yet regardless of magic or iron or guards, there was no stopping Santa Claus once he decided to pay you a visit. Hiding his spoils in a vast network of dead drops, our Khajiit devised a way to move the wares amongst the fences. Aware of the reputation his people carried, and the over-eagerness of guards to cause trouble for the caravans, Santa Claus could not risk using wagons. Instead, he stalked across the pale one autumn evening, he spotted a family of reindeer. Impressed by the size and stamina, he decided to tame them. However, they proved to be stubborn creatures. Undeterred, he slaughtered the deer and used conjuration magic scrolls to control them instead. With the single side effect of his reindeer spontaneously turning into ash, our young Khajiit had perfected his enterprise. And thus, whispers across all the Skyrim would tell of a Khajiit dressed all in red, tearing across the tundra on a sleigh pulled by dead-eyed reindeer. And from those hushed rumours arose this verse. Twas the night before Yule Miss, and all through the keep, not a skeever was scheming, the snow was so deep. The doors were locked tightly, the children in bed, hiding from Santa, his cloak woven red. Riding his reindeer, all dead-eyed and rotty, he carried his list of the good and the naughty. Sharp-toothed and furry, with nimble black paws, carrying sweet rolls was old Santa Claus. Deadly and silent, he took what was offered, plundering and stealing from every last coffer. To those who were worthy, he'd leave sweet surprises, the rest he gave skooma and broken supply lines. Some prayed to Standar and others to RK, when moon sugar cravings felt less like a party. But clever old Santa Claus had a great plan, a timely and well-stocked Khajiit caravan. So beware noble Nordsmen when snow is aground, when it's too cold for dragons and dark all around. He comes from the chimney, upon silent paws, sneaking and creeping, is old Santa Claus. Well guys, now we know about the character and his lore, but what kind of character does that make us? Well, let's take a look. Santa Claus, our Khajiit hero, who brings sweet rolls and laughter to some and skooma and vigilance justice to others, stalks the city of Skyrim, armed with his sharp claws and very lengthy naughty list. He sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, he knows if you're being bad or good, but will rob you either way, so it might be time to hide your gold. For this special Christmas build, we're using a Khajiit. With their proclivity for the stealth arts, they are a natural choice for a good many reasons. Khajiit are known for their natural agility and strength, which makes them regular employees of both the Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood. They are naturally stealthy and have the added bonus of night vision, not to mention some very sharp claws. At the beginning of the game, Khajiit have a plus 5 modifier to each of the stealth skills including alchemy, pickpocket and lockpicking, and a plus 10 to sneak, perfect for early game crime sprees. Khajiit are also very adept trade partners, which makes them excellent merchants and expert traders. So whether buying or selling stolen goods, bleeding a well-to-do patron of his coin, or buying enough moon sugar for a proper white Christmas, Khajiit are a shrewd choice for those who want to get rich. The combination of these stealth skills with the Khajiit race make for a formidable, albeit morally flexible character. This makes an ideal choice for old Santa Claus, our housebreaking, skooma peddling paragon of, of Khajiit virtue. Boosted alchemy skills are just the thing for imbuing sweet treats with something even sweeter, or to boost all your burglary skills. So we move on now to the build and what skill perks and abilities are useful for being old Santa Claus. Santa Claus is essentially a thief. As a thief, we want to play the following way. Use sneak as much as possible, using our lockpick abilities to enter into homes, and your pickpocket abilities to find good loot. 
A good skill might be Illusion, as it goes well with the sneak, like Invisibility and Muffle. However, as we make Skooma and Poison Sweet Rolls, our character is Skilled Alchemist, and so he can make potions of Invisibility, Muffle, Cam, Frenzy, and anything else to escape a tough situation or help us out in any other way. For our main attack, we are going to be using Poison Arrows, so Archery, but you can also use One Handed if you prefer. Since we have very little protection though, attacking from a distance is probably the safer option. Once we have our stolen goods, we will need some skills to fetch a good price. So here is a detailed breakdown of everything you need to know for our lockpick special, Santa Claus build. We will start off with the smaller stuff, first beginning with our stat distribution. Whenever we level up, we want to distribute our points as follows. Since our main focus of the entire build is the lockpick perk, this means we need to sneak a lot, so we don't really need to use any magicka, so there's no need to add any points into your magicka. We really only need health for staying alive and stamina to escape when times are tough, so equal amounts into both, although a 2 to 1 ratio of health to stamina will also be fine. Additional skills and powers can also be gained through standing stones and shrines. For a standing stone we went with the thief stone, since after all it gives the ability to increase all stealth skills faster, so it's very useful. Since we're focusing on lockpick, the tower stone can also come in handy, especially at lower levels. It also allows you to unlock any export or lower locks automatically once per day. Perfect for our character if he's attempting a master lock, especially when you're a low level. So now we can take a look at some of the main perks for our character for around the first 50 levels. And of course we're going to start on lockpick. For perks in the lockpick tree, you want to try to unlock as many of the lockpick skills as possible. Many of the skills come in handy for your playthrough. The ability to unlock locks all the way up to master, unbreakable lockpicks, treasure hunter which allows you to find special treasure as loot, and finally Wax Key, which gives you a copy of the key to the homes you lockpick, so you can hit the same house more than once with ease. Our second most important skill is Sneak, and we should try to do most of these by around level 50. There are only 9 abilities, so it shouldn't take as long as many of the other skill trees. Just put one into the first perk though, and don't do all 5 until you've done the rest of the tree. All the Sneak skills can come in handy, but you should focus on the left side of the tree first, and unlock Muffled Movement, and then Silence, which means walking and running don't affect detection, and the only skill you can probably avoid is Assassin's Blade if you are using a bow, however if you prefer to use one-handed weapons like a dagger, then you can definitely unlock this one. Next is Alchemy. This skill is our main way of staying undetected and escaping tough situations, also helping to kill enemies that you can't sneak kill with a bow like dragons. Potions of Invisibility, Fortify Sneak, Pickpocket and of course Lockpick can also make your time as Santa Claus much easier. During combat, Potions of Health and Stamina Regeneration, Fortify Armor against damage and magic damage, even Potions of Water Breathing can come in handy. If you're forced to fight then there are plenty of Poison Potions to deal Health, Stamina and Magicka damage on your enemies. For the skill tree, that means all of the alchemy skills are probably good to unlock except maybe the Green Thumbs one, as you will probably get more than enough ingredients from stealing from people's homes and you don't really need to forage. Or you can also just buy ingredients to make potions you need, especially with the next skill which is Speech. Speech is probably the most important skill we have. The build for Santa is about breaking and entering, so lockpick is very useful. However, the ultimate goal for breaking and entering is ultimately money. Increasing your speech will be greatly beneficial to you. On the left hand side of the tree, you will get perks that help you increase your selling up to 30%, getting you more gold from stolen goods. Also, the fence perk allows you to sell stolen goods to any merchant. And on the right hand side, if you get caught stealing, as you will be committing loads of crimes during your playthrough, then the bribery and intimidation perks can help you escape conflict. The final main skill for our build is Pickpocket, as it's not only houses that have valuables, the NPCs also have good stuff on them. The main perk important for this tree is the Night Thief, making it easier to pickpocket sleeping targets. Also as Santa Claus you have to place a sweet roll into the pocket of everyone you steal from, so you have to make sure you never get caught. All the other skills in this tree are handy, except maybe the poison one. Other than the 5 major skills, the only other perks that might come in handy for this build is increasing your light armor rating, and maybe the well fitted and matching set bonuses, and the same with damage with bows as it's your main weapon, so you might want to consider upgrading the damage on that a little bit. However, keep in mind the 5 main skills that we went over should take priority, and you should aim to unlock most of these by level 50. So we know a lot about our character, his lore, why Khajiits are a good choice for build, and the best skills to use as a Khajiit, but now we need to know a little bit more about his allies, enemies, companions, and other random stuff. As a Khajiit you're probably not going to have many friends and allies. You mostly stick to your own, but you're also not hated by anyone, so you're free to go pretty much anywhere you want. Although the Stormcloaks can be racist, so Imperial held cities are probably more favourable. 
For gaining skills and allegiances, the College of Winterhold and Companions are pretty pointless for the build, but you have no problems if you wish to do them. And of course, the Thieve Guild is obviously very useful for gaining all the right skills for thievery, helping you master your sneak and other related abilities, such as lockpicking. The Dark Brotherhood can also help you gain the relevant skills, but if you're roleplaying it's probably best to avoid, after all you're a thief and not an assassin, unless you plan to play a killer Santa Claus of course, then the Dark Brotherhood is perfect. For a companion, as we're playing a sneaking character it's probably best not to have a companion with you, it's easier to stealth alone so we didn't choose one. For player home you're a thief so cities are your best friend, but of course you will need plenty of storage for all your goods, so with plenty of income why not have a home in every city, as a place to store your stuff. You don't need to waste money on loads of decor, you're only using these as stash houses so you can have a place to store all the things you need. You should consider a hearthfire home as your main home to stay in as well, as you don't really want to be caught sleeping in a home that's full of stolen goods. For armour and weapons, we have several different choices. Of course, on Christmas when entering homes, we have our Santa suit equipped to keep the myth alive. However, any other time of year, you should probably use the Thieve Guild armour. It not only increases carry capacity, lockpick and pickpocket, it also gives 10% better prices when selling and buying stuff. Since we don't have any enchantments to make our own armors, you should aim to do the Thieves Guild as quick as possible in game as it will help increase all necessary skills, but ultimately completing the guild will give you access to the guild master armor, with the same attributes as Thieves Guild armor but way better. For a weapon, any bow will do, the strongest you can find. However, you want to go for the Nightingale bow, which you also get from the Thieves Guild, so doing this quest quickly can help get all the equipment you need to be powerful early on. Well guys, we've finally reached the end of our build, and now you can play as a lock-picking, thieving Santa Claus who poisons people with skooma. However, we are not done there. The build is pretty good so far, and anyone can have fun trying it out, but if you want to take your character a step further, and enhance and greatly improve the gameplay of this build, then there are some mods that can help you do that. While there are many mods that will work, these 5 are probably the most important that don't change the game too much and only add to the way you play to make it more fun and dynamic. First off is get better potion recipes from Spock rates. Alchemy is going to be a big part of the build and vanilla game is a bit underwhelming. So this mod simply adds 40 new unique recipes to the alchemy table for you to craft in game. Next Whiterun Merchant Remastered. This mod overhauls all the merchants in Whiterun making them far better to loot now and more difficult but ultimately more profitable. The mod also is part of a series of upcoming mods to overhaul all other city vendors which is going to make playing a thief far more exciting. Next up is unique loot and the rebalanced level list. These two work very well together and give you essentially far better stuff to loot everywhere in game. Level list increases the loot and gives rarer loot while unique loot adds better stuff to thousands of barrels, boxes, sacks and containers and pretty much any other storage type you can think of in the game. Finally, don't forget to install the Skull Santa suit if you want to play as Santa Claus. Optionally, you can try some other mods like vendors having more gold so you can sell stuff easier and Ordinator perks overhaul to give you some extra cool lock picking abilities like automatically unlocking locks, the chance to find double weapons and armour in chests and Fate that adds 5 dragons for you to find in game which can be sold for up to 15,000 gold each. However these two are really optional, but there are plenty of great mods that will go with this build. Well guys there we have it, a Christmas themed Skyrim character build video. As always my sister wrote the backstory so let her know in the comments what you thought of it. I wasn't sure how well this build would work out as instead of making a cool build and making a backstory for it, we did it the opposite and had a cool backstory and tried to fit the build around that. So I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below on how well it worked. Next time we will be working on another character build based around another skill tree, so we have 16 left to choose from and it's up to you guys which one we do. So whatever skill get mentioned the most in comments will be our next build. Last time you guys suggested a werewolf build and that will definitely be one of them. I was planning to wait for at least one good werewolf mod to come out before we started this mod and Moonlight Tales is out now, so we can definitely get started on this one, which will probably be our next. If you enjoyed the video guys, like, comment and subscribe. All my social links and information is in the description as well if you want to follow me and keep up to date on social media. Enjoy the rest of your day guys, don't fight too much with those relatives and I will see you all next time for more Skyrim special edition videos. Merry Christmas everyone. Oh. <laughs>